Good evening, everyone. We're in the middle of the Akdama Samalakit, which is on page six. The foreword to Tanya. So last week we spoke of the Alter Rebbe when they started disseminating the Kontresim, the booklets, the various booklets of Tanya. This is even before it was printed. So the Alter Rebbe sent a letter to all of the Anash, to all the Chassidim, explaining his rationale for writing the Tanya. And in this rationale, the Alter Rebbe says he acknowledges that Chassidim aren't really very excited about having to look into a Sefer, as opposed to being able to come into the Alter Rebbe and being able to consult with the Alter Rebbe face to face. In order to explain the why, in order to explain the why Hitake is writing a Sefer, so he first, Alter Rebbe first writes all the reasons why a Sefer is inadequate. And why a Sefer isn't a good substitute. Why it isn't, you might want to say, a valid alternative for face-to-face Yechidus meeting with the Rebbe. So the Alter Rebbe starts off saying, the first thing the Alter Rebbe says is, the problem with a Sefer is that the person learning the Sefer the person has limitations. Limitations in their understanding, limitations in their ability to grasp, limitations in properly understanding the intention of the intention of the um, of the of the author. That's limitation number one. And that's one reason why Chassidim want to go into Yechidus, because this way the Rebbe can very clearly speak to them and make sure they understand properly what, uh, what he is telling them. And the Alter Rebbe says, the next problem with the Sefer is not necessarily any issue or any problem with the intelligence or the understanding or the grasp of the reader, but it's possible that the Sefer simply isn't intended for that person. Because any Sefer that's built on human logic, so we know Ein Dei is same Shavis, no two people think exactly alike. So anytime that a person says something which is based on their own logic, it's going to talk to people who are of like mind and uh, are similar, have a similar psychological pri- profile, whether um, intellectually and emotionally. So sometimes a person can read a book and not be touched by it, simply not because the person doesn't understand what's being said. The person understands wonderfully everything that's being said. It just doesn't talk to, to him or her. Then the Alter Rebbe continues, and this is pretty much where we left off last week, and says that when it comes to a Torah text, something from the Torah, the Torah doesn't only mean the written Torah, Torah is also anything that Chazal tells us, and anything also which was said by the daily Yisrael of the generations, which all of them were written by Ruach HaKodesh. So when it comes to a Torah text, we can't say that it's written for one person and not another, and that is because Yidin, all Yidin are rooted, the neshamas of every single Yid is rooted in Torah. Torah is what connects Yidin to Hashem. And therefore, every word of Torah is connected to every single Yid. So therefore, if there's a Sefer that's written and is based on Torah, so over here it would seem that there's no reason to have to go and run to the Rebbe, to speak to the Rebbe. You can look at the Sefer and you can't say, it's not for me, it is for you. It's based on Torah. And in Torah, every single word of Torah is for every single Yid. Nevertheless, says the Alter Rebbe, and this is what we're holding, we're going to go straight inside. But the same word is not necessarily for everybody. That's the thing. That's the hold, 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 hold one moment. We're starting from Hareza, which is um, eight lines from the bottom of page six. So Alter Rebbe says, Hareza derech klolus leklolus Yisrael. When we say that the Torah is for all Yidim, that is true regarding the Klavos of Torah, Torah in general, is for all Yidin in general. Even though that within every single Klav in Torah, 
there is the prat, there is the detail, which is shaykh to every single yid. Meaning to say, as we mentioned last week, there are 600,000 neshamas, general, um, a root neshamas to Klal Yisrael. And every one of those neshamas um, um, further divides into 600,000 smaller sparks. Every word of Torah speaks to every single Yid. Every idea on Torah speaks to every single Yid. However, which of the 600,000 ways of understanding this word or this idea is what connects to you and to your Neshama? We know that there's Shivan Panam La Torah, there's 70 ways to understand every, every idea on Torah. And moreover, more than 70, it's also brought down, there's 600,000 ways in Pshat, and 600,000 ways in Remez, and 600,000 ways in Drush, and 600,000 ways in Said. And you might, you might even want to argue that because it's Hashem's wisdom, there are infinite ways of understanding every word of Torah. And yes, every word of Torah is talk, talks to and is relevant to every single Yid. But every single person, based on who they are, understands it and sees it differently. And that's why every single day when we daven, several times we ask Hashem, V'sein chalkeinu b'sayr asecha. We say it so many times. How many of us think, sit down to think about that? What does that mean? V'sein chalkeinu b'sayr asecha. Give us our portion in the Torah. L'chayr, we'd be better off just saying, and let me understand Torah. Allow me to be a Talmud Chacham. What does it mean, V'sein chalkeinu? What we're saying is there is a particular portion of Torah which is my portion, which is shayich to my neshama. And you could be learning a Sefer of Torah, whether it's a Chumash, whether it's a Mishnah, whether it's a Gemara, whether it's a Shulchan Aruch, whether it's a Sefer Musar, a Sefer Chassidus, whatever it may be. But there is one way of understanding it which talks to you. And if you don't get it, then you might not be touched by that idea, even though that idea is relevant to you. Interestingly, this is why also the Alter Rebbe writes, Later on in Tanya, in, in Simon Chavav, it's a long Simon. So I'd say the ten chalkenu are not chalkenu. I'm talking about myself. I want to have a part in the Torah. We're asking chalkenu. Right, 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 right. So I'm part of a, I'm part of a klal Yisrael. I'm asking the Eibush to give each one of us our portion in Torah. Oh, for yeah. So the Rebbe writes later on in Simon in Simon Chavav Vegeres Hakodesh. The Chol Ish Yisrael, every single Yid Yuchal Legalis Talumeis Chachma, is able to reveal hidden wisdom in the Torah. Will a Chadesh Seichel Chadesh and to be Mechadesh New and Yanim in Torah. Hein ba Halachis, Hein ba Agodis, whether it's in Halacha and in Sagodah, Hein ben Nigla, Hein ben Nister, to be Mechadesh in Nigla of Torah and Nister of Torah. Why? There's a part of Torah that's waiting for you to reveal. And you don't reveal it, who's going to reveal it? And not only that, umechuyiv bedaver. You're obligated to reveal your part in Torah lahashlim nishmasay, in order to be mashlim your neshama. If I remember correctly, in other places brought on that if you're not mechadish, then your neshama has to come down a gilgal to be mechadish. And why is that? Because there is a way of Torah which is unique and specific to you. How do you, how do you uh, define that? How do you know what's specific to you? And so, so in, in, so that's an impossibility. In a Hanami. And that's why, let, let's go, uh, let's go weiter. What's the next words? And not everyone zoicha to recognize their place, which is why we talk it Davin and ask the Eibushter. We say to Hashem, please do me a favor. Please reveal to me my specific part in Torah. And that's obviously also an advantage into going into a Rebbe in Yichidus because the Rebbe is the Rosh. The Rashi Alpha is all the head, and the Rebbe, just like the head, feels the feels the fingers and the toes and the, and the knees and everything like that. Something we have a topic we've spoken about before. Mm -hmm. The Rebbe knows you because the Rebbe is your head, and therefore the Rebbe is able to identify your chelik and teira, and he was able to help you out. 
So, again, let's recap over here. Number one, Dr. Rebbe says, sometimes you're looking at a Sefer, you don't understand it. That's number one. That's problem one with learning a Sefer. Number two, if the Sefer is based on Chochmah and Nushi if it's based on human logic, it's possible that it's not even meant for you. But even if it's a Sefer which is based on Torah, Yisudas Abhari Kodesh is based on, uh, on Torah, and Torah is Shaykh to you. As we learn in Pirkei Yavis, so now we have another understanding also, in Hafach Bava, Hafach the Kailaba. Every single word of Torah, every single Indian and Torah, dig and dig and dig because there's so many ways. Everything's in there. There's a message in every single word of Torah for every single Yid. But nevertheless, as the Alter Rebbe says, Ein Kaladim Zeich, and not everyone is Zeich, you need a special Siyatad the Shmaya to be Makir your place in Torah, which once again is another advantage to going into the Rebbe face to face and having the Rebbe speak to you and teach you individually. says the Alter Rebbe, moreover, this idea that every single neshama receives Torah and relates to Torah in a unique way this is af behilches iser veheter it's not only when we're talking about you know uh, untangible things more abstract ideas like avas Hashem and yiras Hashem and avodas Hashem Right? How am I supposed to serve Hashem? What's the proper path for me? That's, 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 uh, that's something that's connected to my heart and my emotional uh, profile. And everyone is unique. We, can't, you, we all understand that when a person needs an Eitz and Avedis Hashem, so you need to, um, you need to have um, individualized and personalized advice. And that's why there's a Pasuk that says, a Pasuk in Parshish um, Nitzavim, Says, so the Zayar tells us what is the Nistaris? What is the what is the what is the hidden things and what are the revealed things? So the Zayar says, Hanistaris, the hidden things are Afa Sashem and Yira Sashem. That's the Stardis, that's hidden. It's hidden within every single person, and every single person is different when it comes to that. I saw a Vart. That uh, the pasuk that says that we say in davening at Shabbos, Ani yadati ki gadol Hashem. So there was a gadol that emphasized and says the kavana is Ani yadati. <coughs> I know that Hashem is great, and the knowledge that I have, no one else has. Even if I'm not the biggest tzaddik, because the knowledge that I have is unique to me. There's a certain recognition that I have in Hashem that no one else has. A certain appreciation for Hashem that I have that no one else has. And why is that? Because Hashem created me different than everyone else. But then there is Haniglis. What is Haniglis? Haniglis is the Halachas. You have to wear tzitzis, you have to give tzedakah, you have to keep Shabbos, and you have to eat kosher. And that's Lano Lavarena. That's revealed. That's out there for everyone. So you want to tell me that when it comes to Hanistar, it's Lashem Alekeinu. When it comes to Avaida Ruchnis, the spiritual things, that, those things which are so unique and so individual and so hidden. I there I understand that every person understands it and takes it differently. Says the Alter Rebbe, moreover, even, the, even in the Hanigla Islano Levaneinu, even in, in Yonim, Isr Vahater, what's permitted, what's not permitted. And here we can have a logical argument. We all are dealing with the same facts. In other words, when you look in the Gemara, there's Machloik, Bishamay, Bishil, Abayin, Rava. They're examining facts. They both have all the facts in front of them. They can argue about them. I can't argue with you about Avayi the Sashem because your heart is different than mine. Your mind is different than mine. We can't, sometimes you're speaking, you're, you're like this and I'm like that. As opposed to Niglis, when it comes to Halachas, Halachas of Torah, we're all the same. We all have the same information before us. We're dealing with the same cold, hard, dry facts, it would seem. So it would seem in that area, it's Torah Achas Lukolano, that we all have one Torah. No, says the Alter Rebbe. Af bihilches iser v'hater. Even when it comes to the halachas of iser v'hater, ha niglis lo nu levaneinu. That is the niglis which is revealed. Matzal nu deinu. We find we see machloikis tanoim v'amiroim min hakatsa el hakatsa mamish. Machloikis in between tanoim and amiroim, and they're saying things that are polar opposites one from another. One Tana says. You have to that you have to be miyabim. It's a mitzvah to be miyabim. Comes along another tana and says, "It's also to be miyabim." And if you're miyabim, it's uh, Israel Vesha Sach. And the kids, the kids are a mamzer. Talk about uh, 
you don't get more separate one from another. One says it's a mitzvah, the other says it's the biggest avera. That's the kind of achleikism that you have. And moreover, the elu the elu elakim chayim. It's not pshat that one is right and one is wrong. Every single Torah opinion is correct. When we say it's correct, it's reflecting Hashem's opinion. It doesn't make a difference whether the Allah is that way or not. The Rebbe would quote so how is often. That both is right? We're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, what are your horses? <laughs> the Rebbe would quote from his father a letter that the, that the Rebbe's father wrote to the Rebbe. It's printed in the it was far, it's from the Rebbe's father. He writes over there that every single word in the Gemara and the Mishnah, every single thing is the words of the Eibishter, and you have to make a Bircha Satayra before you say every single word, whether it's a question, whether it's an answer, even if it's something which the Gemara afterwards is Doicha. It's still Torah, it's still Hashem, what Hashem is saying. And the Rebbe's father continues and says, even those places in the Gemara, there are a few places in the Gemara where it brings down an opinion from an Amira, and then afterwards we'll say, Ha! Oh, the the the, the, the rab this in other words that which this person said bedusahi bedusahi means it's foolishness. Hmm. Other words, sometimes someone says something and you bring a raya, it becomes upkishlagin. Uh, it becomes, and sometimes the gemara. It's a few times in the gemara that which this amira said bedusahi. Bedusah means it's foolishness. So it has the rab the rab's father. That 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 statement which the gemara afterwards says is a bedusa is also divri lekim chayim. And if you want to learn that, just that, those words, you have to make a birch asatayra. And that's also what Hashem said. Hashem said those words, and then Hashem said bedusahi. And then Hashem says it's foolishness. <laughs> Every word of tayra is divri alakim chayim. As the Gemara says in Sechtas Eirevin, that machlik um, is in Yisrael, there was, there was uh, three years when you had uh, half of Kuala Yisrael was following Beisilal, and half of Kuala Yisrael was following Beishamayim. I'm not saying half as in 50%, I don't know the percentages, but a significant segment of Kuala Yisrael was following the rulings of Beisilal, and a significant segment of Kuala Yisrael was following the rulings of Beishamayim, until came out a Baskel from heaven, and the Baskel said, Eilu ve'eilu divri elikim chayim, both of, both of them, both the opinions of Beisilal and Beishamayim represent the words of the Eibishter, but v'halacha ki Beisilal, v'halacha is like Beisilal. But after Mashiach come, a lot of halachot would be like Betshah? That's correct. That's because, which wouldn't make sense if we were to say that we'd pass in according to Beis Hill today. Because Beis Hill is right and Beis Shammai is wrong. Then it doesn't make sense suddenly that when Mashiach comes, that Rizal tells us that we're going to start following Beis Shammai. What? Because Mashiach comes, we start doing the wrong thing. What does Hashem want us to do? But the answer is they're both right. So therefore now we could do this and later we could do that because they're both right. And every single word is precise. Elu ve'elu, divrei elikim chayim. Elikim chayim are both in plural. Why does it, why, why, why couldn't it say elu ve'elu, divrei kel echad? Or divrei kel chay? What is this idea of the plural over here? So the Rebbe is going to explain that the words elu ve'elu, divrei elikim chayim actually is also an explanation for the answer and answers the question which you asked, how is it possible that they're both right? Is Hashem confused? <laughs> Hashem says, uh, Hashem says Chayiv and he says Potter. Hashem says it's a mitzvah to be miyabim and he says that it's also to be miyabim. What's going on over here? How is that possible that Hashem has both opinions? The answer is found in the words Alikim Chaim. Lo Shein Rabim says the Alter The words Alikim and Chaim are both words that are plural. Al shame, and that's because it's makar achaim l'nasham es Yisrael. Elikim chaim, the word chaim, is not so much a descriptor of elikim. It's not that Hashem who is alive, but in a deeper sense, elikim chaim means Hashem, who is the source of life, the source of life for all of Klal Yisrael. Which level of Hashem is the source of life for all of Klal Yisrael? So that is the Midas of Hashem. Hashem's seven Midas, and that's why we know that the Menorah, which represents Klal Yisrael, has seven branches to it, the Menorah of the Beis HaMikdash. 
just like Klal Yisrael, were all comprised of one block of gold. We're all the etzem, in the essence, we're all one. And nevertheless, even though we're all one, and obviously we're all gold because we're all having a sham, and every single one of us is a chelik alekha, mimal mamish is godliness. But nevertheless, we stretch out in different ways. And some the shamas are chesed, and some the shamas are gevura, and some the shamas are teferas. One nation, but one nation, every single one of us, our neshama is rooted in one of the different midas of Hashem. So Elikim Chaim refers to the midas, the midas of Atzilus, which they are the source of Chaim for all the neshamas of Kuala Yisrael. Hanechloke is derech klal, even though there are seven midas, but in general these are divided into three columns, which is derech klal l'shloisha kaven, they're divided into three columns, yimin usmoil v'emtza, right, left, and middle, Shehem, which they are chesed, gavura, kindness and severity, v'chulu, etc. V'neshom, Meshesh, Rashnu, Midas HaChesed, Neshomist, who are, they are sourced in Hashem's Midas HaChesed, Hanagos, and Gamkin, their behavior also is lahat is klapi chesed, lahakil, their, their nature is, is to uh, lean towards kindness, and therefore they're mekel, they're lenient, chulu, as we've mentioned in a recent class, they're lenient, meaning what, when they see a, when they see something, right away they say kosher, tohir. Why? Because they want as much as possible. They want to allow anything in this world to be elevated and be connected with its source, etc. The etc. means the shamas obviously that are from the Hashem's midah of gevura. So they're the opposite. They're, they're, they tend to be machmer. Kenoida as is known. That means that Hashem has different midahs. And Hashem's different midas lead to different conclusions. So for example, so let's say uh, your child comes home from school one day and there's a note from the teacher and the note says your son is misbehaving, he's been misbehaving the last while. What's the proper approach? Approach of chesed with the child or approach of gvura with the child? You're saying Gvura. What happened? Both. Okay. We do both. 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 You be, be, be tough with him, and then you you appease him. Okay, so you're the advocating you're advocating Teferis. Well, Teferis is a combination of Chesed and Gvura. <laughs> but before we get to the combination, push him away with your left and bring, sorry. Push him away with your left and bring him close with your right. That's basically what I'm saying. That is correct. But the main thing we have to understand over here. There are two valid perspectives. Chesed is a valid perspective, and Gevur is a valid perspective. What you'll do is another question. You might, embra- you might embrace Chesed, and you might embrace Gevur, and you might embrace a middle ground. That's possible. But this is a situation where there are numerous possible valid responses. Depending on the many factors involved, you'll choose your path. You have to know why he's misbehaving. Sorry? You have to know why he's misbehaving. You have to investigate. That is also correct. But even once you know why, why the child is misbehaving, in general, it still boils down to a chesed approach or a gevura approach. You're going to take a holistic look. You're going to take all the factors involved. And if you're a person who's more of a chesed person, the likelihood is that you're going to throw everything into the into the mixer, mm-hmm. yeah. and what's going to come out, the decision is chesed. Or even if it's chesed mixed with a gevura, it'll be more leaning chesed. towards chesed. If you're more of a person with a gevura personality, you're going to mix in the same, all the, what's the words I'm looking for, all the facts and all the different, uh, all the statistics and the data, you're going to mix it all together, and you're going to come out with a more gevura dick approach. It's not right, it's not wrong. Because again, they're both valid. And the same thing is when it comes to halacha. Same. So those people who have a neshamas, who's their, their neshamas were rooted in chesed. So therefore, when they took all the facts, they looked at the pasuk and the Torah and the different mesoira uh, that they had, and they put it all together, and they came out, and they, with chesed. But what was their, their opinion was reflecting chesed of atzilus. Their opinion was reflecting the opinion of, ches, of, Hashem, of Hashem's chesed. Beis Hilo, they were reflecting the opinion of Hashem's gvura. So how is it possible there should be disagreement? Because Elikim Chaim. Because the mucker of Neshamas Yisrael, 
which is Elikim, is also divided. It's plural. It's divided into different Midas. And therefore, there can be different, um, different possible um, um, conclusions. And then we have a bezin down here, and we say, Akhri Rabbim Lahatis. And we say, whenever there are different, that, that's the mechanism, whenever there are different correct opinions in Torah, we follow the majority. But even after you follow the majority, that doesn't mean, Chas Shalom, that the minority opinion was wrong. It just means that Lepoyal, we are going to follow the majority opinion. So what we see over here is incredible. In those areas of Torah which are Hanigla Islanu Levanin, the areas of Isr Vahatr, what's permitted, what's not permitted. You have two different people, and each person learns the Torah and understands the Torah appropriate to their own Shama, to their own Shaira Shana Shama. Inside, two lines on the top of page Dalad. The Kolshkin Vakavachimer, how much more so by Nistadis Lashama Likenu. When you're talking about those areas that are hidden, the Inun, which they are, as the Zayar tells us, the Chilu Rechimu, what are the hidden things? The fear of Hashem. And the love of Hashem, the Bemoicha Veliba, which is in the mind and the heart, which in this we say, the Kolachad Vachad Lefum Shiura Delay. Every single person, this is according to their capacity, according to their, uh, their abilities. As the Zayar says, Lefum Mad and Mishayir Belibe. Every person according, serves Hashem according to their heart's capacity. As it says in the Zayar, so this is a part of the Eshes Chayel. So we say Neida Basharem Bala. So the Eshes Chayel, and its source is talking about the Isha is Klal Yisrael, and the Baal, the husband is Hashem. So what does it mean Neida Basharem Bala? Her husband is known in the gates. Who's her husband? Her husband is Hashem. Who's he known to? To Klal Yisrael, to his wife. Noida, the husband becomes known. Noida Baila, the husband becomes known. But how Bisha'arim? So what does Bisha'arim mean? So the Zayar says Bisha'arim means the word Sha'ar is related to the word Shi'ur. Lefuma de Mishair Blibe. How is Hashem known to Klal Yisrael? Everyone has their own Shi'ur. Everyone relates to Hashem, knows Hashem, and connects to Hashem in the as their heart can contain and to the capacity of their heart. And it's hard not to note right away the similarity of the word shiur to shar, which shar means a gate, which means my gate to Hashem is according to my shiur, that which my heart can understand and that which my heart can feel. So therefore, the problem with having a sefer is that I have my shar, I have my gate to Hashem, I have my part in Torah, I have that part in Torah that talks to me, or not so much the part of Torah that talks to me, but every single part of Torah, there is that unique understanding which talks to me. And maybe I'm not zeicher to that. And with this style, the Rebbe concludes all the reasons why, all the deficiencies of a Sefer, all the reasons why Chassidim should come into Yechidus to the Rebbe, and why they should not suffice with a safer, because a safer again, you're limited by your intellect and by your ability to grasp and understand. If it's written with human seichel, who said Bakal, it's talking to me, who said it's for me? And even if it's Torah and it does talk to me, but what if I'm not Zeicha to be able to understand and to be able to identify my particular way portion in that Torah? Ach. But here comes the big ach, the big however. However, says the Rebbe, however, biyoidai umakirai ko'amina. So usually when an author writes a, a book, they're in what we call an ivory tower. You have academics writing books. They go, they do their research, they go to the libraries and they pour over the Sfarim, and then they write their chidushim. And essentially what they're doing is, is themselves talking to themselves. And anyone who buys the Sefer, what are they doing? They're getting a glimpse into the conversation that the author is having with himself. It's a problem. If you're not in touch, not in touch with the people. I have this problem all the time. I work for an organization called JLI, Jewish Learning Institute. And what we do is we create curriculums, Torah curriculums, which are taught by the Shluchim around the world. In my office, which I sit with my colleague, we have hanging 
on the door a sign that says ivory tower <laughs> it's our way of always remembering that we have no idea the students who we have what their needs are and what their questions are and what their experiences are and that's why we try very very much to be in touch and we always have committees of instructors of shluchim around the world that review the content and they give their advice and they give their suggestions because we recognize that we're sitting in a room and we're taking out svarim, pulling out svarim and we're writing an Indian as it says in the svarim but who are we talking to? you have to know who you're talking to and most svarim once again is the author busy talking to themselves this is their chidushim, this is my big ideas and my big thoughts Says the Alter Rebbe, I want you to understand that in Sefer Atanya, I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to the people who I know and the people who I recognize. I'm addressing in this Sefer in Tanya, or in the booklet that Alter Rebbe is writing, I'm addressing every member of Anash, who is in our country, who is in our country, and in the adjoining countries, Asher Hoya Hadibur Shal Chiba Motsi Beneno. That I would have conversations with all of you. And these conversations were characterized by Chiba loving kindness, closeness, dearness. Vigilu Lefana says, Dr. Rabbi, you revealed before me, Kol Taluma is Libam Omecham Baveda Sasham, you revealed to me. All the secrets that are in your heart and in your mind, anything that concerns the service of Hashem, Hatluya Balev, which the service of Hashem is dependent on the heart. In other words, Alter Rebbe says, All of you, Mechsidim, you have come to me to Yechidus for 20 years, you've poured out your hearts to me. I know you. I know you very well. I know you intimately. And I know what your problems are. Aleyhem Titaif Milasi, it is to you. It is to you that my words are addressed and my tongue has become a quill, the quill of a scribe in these booklets which are written, are called here once again Dr. Eber repeats that which he said in the, in the title page that, that which I write over here in these contrasim, these booklets are compiled from Sfarim and from Soifrim from scribes, which according to the Kabbalah of Chassidim, Sfarim is primarily the Sfarim of the Shala and the Sfarim of the Maharal, and Sefrim is primarily the Baal Shem Tev and the Magid of Mezrich. But I have a problem with what you are down here. It means only Chassidim or his, his people can learn the Tanya. Hold it. If he's Sfarim, he's Sefrim, Kedeshi, Elyon, Nishmas, Amedim, the holy people. Who are in Gan Eden, Hamufrasavimeslenu, you know who I'm talking about, says Dalta Rama. Uktsas Mahem, some of the ideas that I'm writing here in Tanya, near Mazin the Hakimin, are alluded to, and if you're wise, you're able to pick them up. Be Igre Sakoidesh in the letters Mirabisenu Shabaris Hakoidesh from our teachers in Eretz Yisrael, Tabana the Sakina and Behaira Bimenu Amin. And that is the, the he's referring to, the Altareb is referring to Ramanach Mandel of Haradak. Also known as Rabbi Nachmed Vitebsker, the author of the Sefer uh, Pri Haaretz. He went up with a bunch of chassidim in the early uh, 17th, in, in, the, in, the, in the middle 1770s. He went up with, with, the first, with a group of chassidim and they settled in Eretz Yisrael. And Dr. Rebbe supported them financially. And that was Quil Chabad that was established to support them. And they, and they would write letters to the chassidim in, 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 uh, in Russia. So Dr. Rebbe says, some of the ideas that I'm going to write, you'll see, are alluded to in those letters that we received from Eretz Yisrael. Uktsasam, some, some of the ideas, shamati mipi makadash, I heard from their holy mouths. Be'yeisam po'i imanu, when they were here together with us. V'kulam heim, everything that I'm writing in these, in these uh, booklets. Heim tshuvais, they are the answers, al she'elish rabbis, and the many questions. Asher Shailin Be'etza, which people come and ask for advice, call Anash Dimadinaseinu Tamid, all the Anash of our countries. Call Echad Lafi Erkei, everyone everyone who asks according to their to their uh, to their status, Lashis Eitzis Benasham, everyone that have questions, searching for advice, Bavida Sasham. Alter is saying, Yes, there are many different big uh, balat, there are many different uh, limitations that a safer has. But I want you to know that I have experience with you. I'm addressing the safer to the people who I know. I know your questions, I know your issues, 
I know what's bothering your hearts. And I'm writing a Sefer, and in the Sefer is going to be the answers to all the questions. Now, comes along Sasson and says, but the Alter Rebbe doesn't know him. So first of all, it's still a nice Sefer. You're coming here five years, so you can testify that it helped you also, even though... <laughs> but at the same, but as besides for that, <coughs> there's Taka... There's Taka Kabbalah of by Chassidim, when the Rebbe says, that he's talking to the people who he knows, he's talking about anyone who learns Tanya until Moshiach comes. How does he know Sasan? How does he know you? He said, the Rebbe knew you also, and the Rebbe is telling you that all your questions are in Tanya also. The Rebbe Rashab wants to say, oh, so basically what the Rebbe is saying is, this is like going into Yechidus with the Rebbe. You have a question, and Avaid Hashem, you want to go into Yechidus to the Alter Rebbe to ask the question, learn Tanya, you're going into Yechidus to the Alter Rebbe. The Rebbe Rashab said that when you learn Tanya, it's you're having a conversation with the Alter Rebbe. That's what he said. But you have to know which page to go to to find an answer to your problem. Oh, you have no patience. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> There's a story of Messiah Rabbi Chassidim. They say that once after Tanya was published, they saw the, they found the Alter Rebbe sitting by a table and he's learning. And they take a look, what's he learning? And he was obviously deeply contemplating something. And they see that he has a Tanya open in front of him. And they were a little puzzled by this. The Alter Rebbe, he wrote Tanya. So they asked him, What's, uh, why are you learning Tanya? So he said that I find here more Chidushim than I found in Mezrich by my teacher. That's what he said. In other words, because the Alter Rebbe wrote the Sefer with Ruach HaKadosh, with the Siyat of the Shemaya, when he says that the answers to all the questions are there, that means the answers to all the questions are there. So even if there's a question which the Alter Rebbe wasn't consciously thinking of, when he wrote the Tanya, it's also there. So the Alter Rebbe, apparently someone came to the Alter Rebbe with a question and he didn't automatically know the answer. So he opened up a Tanya to find the answer to the question because he knew that all the questions to all the answers are going to be in Tanya. But, says Reuven, how do I know where to find the answer? But we'll get to that soon. But first, the Alter Rebbe has to say something else, which is, Okay, so the, the Chas is going to come back to the Al-Tarebbe and say, Okay, you convinced me. All the deficiencies in a Sefer don't apply. Your Sefer addresses my questions. But I still want to go into Yechidus. Why should I have to go open the Sefer and work hard and find an answer? I'd rather just go to you, ask the question, and you give me the answer straight. Conti- so al continues and says, Ki azman grama oid. There is no more time anymore. Lahashi will call echad echad al sha'alasi bepratus. I don't have time anymore to answer everyone individually. This is partially a simple fact that the Alter Rebbe, in a short span of time, he, um, he, he, uh, he attracted a following of hundreds of thousands of chassidim. There wasn't time for the Alter Rebbe to be able to properly devote time to every single chassid who came into Yechidus. I think we spoke about this a little last week, that there were very strong takanas in this area. The Alter Rebbe says, I don't have a choice because I don't have time anymore to respond to every single person individually. That's number one. And number two, vegam ashikham mitsuya. People forget. So the Rebbe says there's actually an advantage to a sefer because when you come into yichidus by me and you ask me a question, I will answer you, and you might forget it. But this way, it's written, and you won't forget it. Just remember that when the Rebbe says something, every word is exact. You walk out, you're going to remember every single word the Rebbe says. You're not going to remember. But over here, the Rebbe says I'm giving you all the answers, and it's going to be exact. It's going to be precise. Maybe he's teaching you to do Hazara, so all the time you repeat and you will know that the answer is here. The bottom line, Shikha Mitsuya, forgetting this place. I, I had this experience, it was interesting. A few weeks ago, I was teaching, was teaching a group of girls in Crown Heights. And I mentioned a certain person and how this person went to how, um, and I said, you know what, there's a video of him going by dollars by the Rebbe. So let's go on, there's a, in the classroom, there's a there's a whiteboard and there's a projector. So I went on, I showed them the video on Chabad.org. I showed them the video of the person going by the Rebbe. Interesting interaction with the Rebbe. I'm about to shut the video and I see <coughs> that they say, you know, next. You know, when you watch a video, they'll say, what's the next? The next video is an interview that they had with this person many years later. The person talks about his relationship with the Rebbe. So I told the students, do you, guys, do you want to watch the interview? They said, sure. So I, we go to the next video, watch the interview. And he describes what happens by the dollars that we just watched. 
And let me just tell you, the description did not match what actually happened. <laughs> and he was, and, and he was being 100% honest, but his memory wasn't precise. He, the, it was, I mean, he got the basic, the basic story was, was correct. But the way he said what the Rebbe said, the Rebbe said this, the Rebbe said that, the Rebbe didn't Mama say that, the Rebbe said something similar to that. And he understood, maybe also he understood that the Rebbe meant something, so he made it a kill, the Rebbe already said it. The bottom line is, time goes by, and memory is a tricky thing, and you don't remember everything precisely, as much as you think you do. Everyone here, I'm sure, has had times in their lives where you were absolutely convinced they had a certain memory is correct, and you found out that it wasn't correct. Mm -hmm. You thought you were sure that you remembered something happening, you were there, and then suddenly you were proven somehow or other that your memory was faulty. So Dr. Rebbe, advantage to a safer is you're not going to forget what I'm saying. So again, two reasons why he's writing the safer. Number one, there is no time. Number two, so people shouldn't forget. Al-Kainan therefore, Rashamti kol ha-tshuves al kol I'm writing down over here all the answers to all the questions. You realized how, how incredible this... Uh, this line is, Dr. Rebbe says, I'm giving all the answers to all the questions and there is no humility over here. Dr. Rebbe doesn't say, and therefore I've tried to the best of my ability to be able to cover a lot of the questions with some of the answers, right? As a, it's a very, Bechlal, Tanya is unique in that way. I, one thing I always uh, marvel, there is no Yesh Leimar in the whole Tanya. There's no, everything Dr. Rebbe says is absolute. It's a, uh, what direct, as it is. I'm telling you, Alter Rebbe. This is no one that the Alter Rebbe, the Rav, Tano, the Rav, Tano Pali. He's telling you, I'm putting down every answer to every question. There's no and there's no uh, fine print over here, with the with exceptions to the rule. Straight. Now it's going to be forever. Everyone will be able to remember it. There's no need anymore to push, to enter, to speak to me in Yechidus. Ki bahen, because in these booklets, Yimtza, Margoya, Lenafsha, you'll find soothe, uh, soothing for your neshama. Ve'etza nechoyna, and proper counsel, proper advice. L'chol davar akasha, Allah, b'avedis Hashem. For anything that might be difficult to you in Avedis Hashem. Again, l'chol davar. It's a very, very grand statement. You are going to find an Eitzah for anything that is difficult for you in your Avedis Hashem. The Alter Rebbe says, your heart can be calm, trust in Hashem, Gamer Ba'adenu, who will finish the job for us. In other words, if you're going to learn the, the Tanya, this is Alter Rebbe, and you're going to work on starting to implement the ideas in them, we know that Hashem is not going to make you into Yerushalayim, but if you start to Avoida, Hashem will be Gamer Ba'adenu. Hashem will finish the job for you and make sure to crown your efforts with Hatzlacha and with success. After he wrote the Tanya, he had less Hasidim coming to Yechidot? That's an interesting question. I don't know. Because here he's telling I know, I know, mean? I know. I've looked into it. I, if the answer is yes, I doubt it was because the Hasidim um, stopped wanting to come because they had Tanya. Maybe there were more restrictions put on. But I don't know. Bottom line is I don't know the answer to that question. I do know that there's later on in Tanya, in Simon Chavbeis in the Garis HaKadosh, the Altarebbe writes a letter to the Siddim, where the Altarebbe says, no more coming to me to ask any more about uh, um, physical, material things. I don't know. I have, nothing to, I, have no, I have nothing to say in these areas. Only come to me and ask me questions about Avedas Hashem. And in that, there's a very clear message that the Siddim disregarded the Altarebbe's request, and they kept on coming and asking. That when we get there, Mirza Hashem, one day we'll talk about it then. But in terms of what we hear, was this an any request in any way honor? I suspect that the answer is no. Chassidim didn't really, uh, but um, I, I don't know. I don't know for sure. Okay, so the Alter Rebbe is establishing like this. You should know that this Sefer, I'm giving you a Sefer, that this Sefer has no deficiencies. This Sefer talks to every single person, speaks their language, answers their questions. But we still have a question. No, the question you asked. I think it was you. So I have a question. You're telling me. Are you Here, here's the Tanya. And the four minutes. <laughs> the answer is here. And the four minutes now, I got shot in the truth. Sorry. Ah, oh, right. 
the, there are certain, there's certain the right books format. that are written. It's not the right format. Certain no, safer no. that's written question and answer, question and answer. With a good, you have a good index, a good mafteach, right? Ah, okay, what do I do? Machshav Azar is doing this, or I have to, ah, ah, boom, here, here's the answer. So, first of all, how do you find it? How do you find it? How do I know where the answer is? Learn the full sefer, and then you learn. Then, the how to, then, how to apply the answer to your, to your purpose? Well, no, no, no. That, no. Dr. Rebbe is telling you that this, the answers we have over here are applied. The, what? the answers apply. I'm telling the not only is the answer in Tanya, but the application is also in Tanya. But how do I find it? Insight. Someone whose mind is short. Oh yeah. And doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't see the advice in these contradictions. Should go over to the, the big people in the city, the people who are uh, the mashpiyim in the city. And they will show him in Tanya where the answer to the question is. They will uh, make him understand. He says the Al-Tarebbe, and I have now a request for the mashpiyim. For the people who learn Tanya and study Tanya and understand Tanya well, I have a request for you. Please, don't put your hand on your mouth. To be uh, falsely humble and uh, I don't know, I don't know. Go ask someone else, what do I know? Who can know that as is known, the incredible punishment. For those people who withhold food, but uh, here we're talking about spiritual food. The and the incredible reward for someone who provides other people with spiritual food. As is known, the Pasuk says that when one person helps another Yid and in, be- in helping him understand Torah, the Abish there lights up the eyes of both of them. So I shall, <coughs> so the Alter Rebbe writes actually in, in Torah, the Alter Rebbe writes that when a person helps another Yid, so nasa moichei velibe zakim elef pa'amim kacha. Your mind and your heart become a thousand times more zakim, edel, refined. And the Tzemach Tzedek wrote on this that my grandfather wasn't exaggerating. Which means that when you help another yid, a yid teva begasmis or a teva beruchni is something which took you, would have taken you a thousand hours to learn, will take you now one hour to learn. Your heart and mind, their capacity is increased by a thousand. Question. Question. And it says, this is the sefer that will help you with avodat kodesh. Your avodat Hashem. But so that's ruchnius. But there's many different levels. There's, like I'm trying to understand. Let's say a person. I'm going to go straight. Let's say a person has psychological issues that they're saying I'm grappling with. Would you say to so this? Is that is that considered avodat Hashem, or is, or is that considered? Of a lower level, it could be. Would it would it be within Tanya those issues? Those it questions? could be. If it's framed as an avodas Hashem problem, is that psychological issue impacting your avodas Hashem? Okay. Yeah, but, but we do have to make a disclaimer over here. When a person has an actual illness which has to be treated medically, then we're not talking about that. Right. No, I'm not talking about that. But we're talking about you know the, 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 the within the range of normal. Right. So if let's say a person's sad, for example. Right. Good. Tanya is not going to tell you how to be happy. But if you say, I'm sad and therefore I can't serve Hashem, right. there you have the answers in ah, Tanya. Got it. Right. That's why it could be. All these things could be Avedat Hashem issues, yes. Right. Tanya is not a self help uh, book, it's uh, answers and issues of Avedat Hashem. To, to make a connection to Hashem, you should be connected to Hashem. And the Mashpia should be able to help that person in that area. There's another, yeah, enlighten the person. There's another area here also, which if you realize that. Our bechira is only in areas of Avedis Hashem anyways. So let's say you, you're sad. If, uh, unless you frame it as an Avedis Hashem um, um, issue, Lab Dafke, you can heal yourself. Because the Abishta determines what's going to be with you. The only thing that Hashem doesn't determine is whether you're going to serve Him or not. So it, if you're sad, it's possible the only way Bechal to be healed is by framing it as Avedis Hashem issue. That's a very big kiddush. Yes, this is a... Uh, very big kiddush. Yeah. But if you think it through, what I'm saying, yeah. you'll arrive at that conclusion. Yeah. It's a logical conclusion. You know, I don't know if I... 
I one time wrote the Rebbe many, many times about an issue. The Rebbe didn't answer me. And then I said, Rebbe, I can't concentrate on learning Torah anymore. I, I need help with this issue. Boom. I got an it's just funny, like you're just saying, I got an answer immediately. That's amazing. It's an amazing story. Yeah. So let's continue over here. So the Alter Rebbe is giving a bracha to the mashpiim that if they help the other people, if they open up their eyes and explain them the Tanya, Hashem will uh, will uh, show His radiant face to them. The light of the face of Hashem, the Living King. The one who gives life to all life should allow us to merit to the days when no person will teach his neighbor as the Navi says because everyone will know Hashem because the earth will be filled with knowledge of Hashem now this is something which is very interesting about Tanya Tanya is written as answers to all the questions yet as Ruven points out very astutely it's not written in a question and answer format you would think that if the Alter Rebbe wants to write if the answers, make it easy, make it easy. Ma- make it easy right? right? Today you have a lot of books, FAQs, right? What's F- Frequently asked questions. Oh, Never saw the word FAQ? Yeah. FAQ. Yeah. Alter Rebbe, the title could have been Avodah um, Hashem <laughs> FAQs. Frequently asked questions. Yeah. <laughs> Organized according to theme and according to topic and according to, to, to Yom Tiv and to age and gender, etc. <clears throat> the Alter Rebbe writes 53 Prakim discussing a variety of topics the Alter Rebbe says the answers are all in there the advantage is, is because if you want to answer all the questions you can't do that in one volume think about it everyone has a different question and a different variety of questions and if you look you're going to go through your index you're not going to find your question because your particular knech your particular uh, you know uh, is not, is, it was not addressed. It's impossible to write every single question. But what you can do is, without, without, not what you can do, but what Dr. Rebbe was able to do was since he knew all the questions that come in, he was able to write the principal ideas that answer every single question. But to give over the principal ideas, you can't write it in question and answer format. Because question and answer format is limited by definition because everyone asks, it's really the same question, but it's asking in a different way from my circumstances, from my uh, perspective. So Dr. Rebbe doesn't go, don't go that way. He goes, he says, I'm giving you a safer and I want you to know. So on the one hand, that's an amazing schus to be able to have a safer like this where all the answers are in it. But on the other hand, it's also something which is, um, it's challenging because it's not, it, it's not as easy as finding the right page and going, and therefore Tanya needs to be learned once and needs to be learned twice and needs to be learned three times. And... Um, and every single time you learn it, you come up with new ideas. And I'm telling you that I've been learning Tanya for many years. And I learn Tanya all the time. I give a few shirim a week on Tanya. And every once in a while, it'll, I'll, I'll be struggling with something. And suddenly it'll hit me that the answer to this question is in this and this parak. It's unbelievable. And, but, but why didn't I get it? Because if the question is, doesn't say clearly, here's the question, here's the answer. But I'll understand that a particular principle in a pedic directly, directly addresses this issue and, and, t- and tells me how to resolve it. Then I need the Lekeil Gemer Badenu. I have to do the work and I need Hashem's help with Hatzlacha. But the answers are all there. And if you don't know, you have to go to someone who does know, someone who knows Tanya. Dr. Rebbe says, but I'm telling you, everything is there. And if you don't see it, the problem is not in the safer, the problem is you. Go find someone who understands Tanya and will show you where the answer is. And that's the, 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 that's the Metzias, that's all, all the answers are there. Yeah. I think the Bala Tanya gave a lot of pressure to the Mashpim here. You get Sakha, but you get honest if you don't... Oynash, if you know something, you're Meneya Bar. Meneya Bar doesn't mean that attack you don't know. Meneya Bar means someone comes and asks you a question. Says, I, I have this problem. And you know where in Tanya it is. You know. But you're, nah, I'm too humble. <laughs> That's not Meneya Bar. Not, you're not being punished for, uh, for not... Uh, <laughs> Meneya Bar means you have food, you're not giving it. <laughs> and Dr. is very worried about that. Uh, this is a big thing by Chassidim. This, this uh, uh, Shiflo Shal Sheker. 
which is very, very looked down on by Chassidim. The idea of uh, false humility. A Chassid is not, doesn't have false humility. A Chassid is very humble, but a Chassid is 100% aware of his or her strengths. Abilities. And what? Abilities. Abilities. Oh. Is also very aware of his or her deficiencies. It goes both ways. Right. But there's no delusion going on. It's not about uh, not being fully um, aware, be so, full, fully being self-aware. And you can be the greatest person in the world, and the wisest person in the world. I know the most citizens in the world. And you're still humble. Why are you still humble? What do you have to be humble about? No? The more you know, the more you know that you don't know. So there, there are a lot of answers. One is the more you know, the more you know you don't know, which is definitely true. There's no question about that. Especially when it comes to learning about Hashem, when the ultimate knowledge is knowing that you talk and know nothing, you talk and don't know because you really can't understand Hashem at all. But there's another nukuda. The closer you become to Hashem, the more humble you become. The whole idea of Yeshus comes from being a lowly person. The whole idea, Yeshus, Gaiva, what does it come from? Lowly. lowly person. The more you learn Chassidus, the more you're connected to Hashem, automatically, the more you're in touch with the reality. And what's the reality? The reality is that you're nothing. The reality is that ain't You know, if we call the world was created yesh mi'ayin. So Chassidus many times it asks yesh mi'ayin, something from nothing. The opposite is true. It's actually we're ayin mi'yesh. Why? Because we are nothing. And what is the ultimate something? Is Hashem. So why are we saying the world was created yesh mi'ayin? Wouldn't it be more accurate to say the world was created ayin mi'yesh? And Chassidus answers that it's about our perception of things. And our perception, we're yesh. And Hashem is ayin, meaning it's abstract, it's ethereal, it's not something we can relate to. It's not as real. Hashem isn't as real as the, as the table in front of me. But it's not, in truth, Taka, Hashem is yesh and we're ayin. The closer you get to Hashem, and the closer you recognize that Hashem is a yesh, you're an ayin. the more you're an ayin. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu was the humblest person that ever lived. And yet, he had the strength of a lion. In this week's parasha, Kairach comes and says, I want to be the leader. So you would think the humblest person in the world, what would that person say? Absolutely, sure, take over. You're much better at this than me. But Moshe says, he turns to Hashem and says, get rid of them. And, th and this is the t person who the Torah attests to, is the humblest person who ever lived. But Moshe knew his mindless. He knew exactly who he was. So wh why was he humble nevertheless? That's a silly question. Why was, he hum how, why was he humble nevertheless? A person who had a relationship with Hashem like Moshe Rabbeinu, how could he not be humble? How could he not be the humblest person in the world? A person who speaks to Hashem, as the Tapasic Tejah says, upon him, upon him. How could he be arrogant? When you're so in tune with the MS of Hashem and Enid Bovadeh, of course, you're on of Ma'id Mekal Adam. Of course, you have zero self-importance. You're completely bottled to Hashem. But that bittle doesn't translate as weakness. And this is the same thing that the Rebbe is saying over here to the Mashbim. He's saying to them, you have to be humble 100%. But not a Shifl Shal Shekhar. Not that, uh, who am I? What am I? What can I do? No, no, you have to know your job and you have to know your, yeah, what your abilities are and you have to make sure that you use your, um, your influence to the best of your ability. Let's finish off. It'll take another two minutes. Um, until now, this was the letter that the Alter Rebbe wrote when he originally re released the booklets, before he published it. When the Alter Rebbe published the Tanya in 1796, then the Alter Rebbe added this last paragraph, which is a technical paragraph. Vihine, Achash Nishpastu Akontresuma now. The Alter Rebbe says, now that the booklets have been distributed the care of Kalanash amongst all the Chassidim Hanal mentioned earlier in many copies may they say from Shinim and Mushunim by scribes many different scribes and many uh, strange scribes because of the many copies many many typos very very much so and therefore the spirit was uh, Aroused of these distinguished people, Hanakufim, Hanal, 
who are mentioned in the Avril Adaf on the other side of the page. In the original Tanya, the, their names were printed on the, of the publishers were printed on the other side of the page. So these people, they decided to um, do the work with their bodies and with all their strength to bring these booklets to print Menukim clean mekol sig v'to sefer clean from any a uh, sig is a uh, psoilus is any uh, like in silver you have um, Impur- dross impurities Impur- freed from any purities or mistakes umugoyim hetev and well proofed well edited va'amina la paala tava yasher chela and I want to say to this wonderful uh, work I want to see yeshikoyach v'liyais but because kimikra mali diberakos there's a pasuk a beferish a pasuk aror masig vuri eyu Cursed be someone who uh, steps upon the other person's um, parnasa. Va'odur, when the Pasuk says, Odur, Odur, Be'iklala, Be'nidui, Chas V'sham, that also the word Odur contains in it a curse and also excommunication. Al-Kain, therefore, Ki huda va'id glakra, my words really aren't needed because you have a Pasuk, but I'm coming to add on to the Pasuk, Kasina, I've come, Lamishti guda raba, to make a big uh, iser, I'll call out Matfisim and all the and all the publishers. Lehatvis kontreisim and not to print these booklets. Leil the Atzman not by themselves. Leil the Gidol hey not through any of their proxies. Bilti the Shus Hanakuvim Hanal without permission of the people mentioned earlier. Masha Chami Shanim for five years. Miyoyim Kleis Hatfus from when the publication is finished. Will Hashemim Yunam to those for those who listen it should be sweet. V'tavi Aleim Bir Chastoi when they should have a bracha of all good. These are the words of the compiler of Lakuti Amarim Hanal. This is, um, so with this we finish the foreword, and Amir Tashem, next week we will start a review of Prakim 35 through 53. It'll be probably around four Prakim. I'll, uh, we'll a flyover review of those, uh, it was around 19, 20, 19 Prakim. And um, once we fi- after we finish that, we will start the second part of Tanya, which is Shari Yufu Zemona.